Number 7. Jonathan and Diana Tebby An engineer in the United States Navy and his wife were arrested on October the 9th of 2021 after it was discovered that they were selling state secrets to foreign nations. 42-year-old Jonathan Tebby of Annapolis, Maryland was granted top secret security clearance as part of his position in the US Navy where he worked in nuclear engineering. He originally began sending sensitive US military data to interested international parties in December of 2020. Tebby freely offered up a package containing secret information regarding the United States' nuclear submarines to an unidentified country. The package also carried a letter that, among others, read, this is not a hoax. After this initial transaction, an undercover FBI agent posed as a representative for a foreign government and communicated with Tebby about obtaining documents detailing the design and operating parameters for their nuclear submarines. Tebby was given cryptocurrency payments as compensation for the classified information he passed along. He reportedly carried out three separate exchanges, receiving a total of $100,000 for his efforts. At one of the dead drops, Tebby concealed an SD card with sensitive documents inside a peanut butter sandwich, while his wife, Diana, served as a lookout. A pack of chewing gum was used to hide a memory card at another drop-off. The Tebbies were arrested in West Virginia and charged with violating the Atomic Energy Act. Number 6. Stuart Nozette 52-year-old planetary scientist Stuart Nozette was arrested on October the 19th of 2009 and pleaded guilty to attempted espionage and fraud against the United States. Nozette served as a consultant to the US government on a variety of classified projects dating back to the 1980s. He even served on the National Space Council under President George H. W. Bush. His involvement with top-secret nuclear and satellite programs gave him the highest level of security clearance offered by the United States. His employment within the federal government officially came to an end in 2006, at which point he began working on India's extraterrestrial moon probe known as Chandrayaan-1. Nozet's financial affairs while employed by NASA soon became the subject of a Justice Department investigation. Nozette reportedly billed NASA for various personal expenses including three mortgages, nine credit cards, and a tennis club membership. Nozette's past was under intense scrutiny by federal investigators who, in addition to the instances of fraud, uncovered emails he'd sent in which he threatened to deliver classified documents to foreign countries. The Justice Department notified the FBI of these messages and Nozette started receiving phone calls from an individual claiming to be an Israeli Mossad agent. Nozette agreed to send this person top secret information regarding US defense strategies in exchange for payment. Within a month of his first correspondent with this supposed Israeli operative, Nozette was arrested as his contact in Israel's government was actually an undercover FBI agent. Due to his Jewish heritage, Nozette had claimed the right to return to Israel and asked for $2 million for the state secrets he promised. Instead, he was given a 13-year prison sentence on fraud and espionage charges. He was released on November the 13th of 2020 and began working on a memoir of his life experiences. Number 5. Dong Fan Greg Chung Chinese-born engineer Dong Fan Chong of Orange County, California, known to most as Greg, worked for both Rockwell International and Boeing over the course of his 30-year career as a stress analyst. His position gave him secret security clearance as he worked directly with the United States' Space Shuttle Initiative. Chung was therefore privy to sensitive information about the technologies being developed in the USA's defense and space programs. Although he retired from Boeing in 2002, he returned just a year later as a contractor. He held this position until September of 2006, when he was arrested on charges of economic espionage. The Justice Department discovered that Chung had been collaborating closely with the People's Republic of China, sending its government restricted technology and government secrets relating to the space shuttle and Delta IV rocket. Federal investigators found correspondence from Chung and Chinese aviation professionals from as early as 1979, including letters that gave Chung 
clear directions on the specific information Chinese intelligence was after. Chung made multiple trips to China while he was a Boeing employee, and the FBI retrieved roughly 250,000 pages of Boeing documents in his Orange County home. Chung claimed in court that he was using the sensitive information as research towards writing a book, but on July the 16th of 2009, the 73-year-old was sentenced to 15 years in prison for spying on behalf of China. He passed away on May the 18th of 2020 while he was still incarcerated. Number 4. Walter Kendall Myers Walter Kendall Myers began working for the U.S. State Department in 1977, instructing new trainees at the Foreign Service Institute. Just a year later, he took a trip to Cuba and was recruited by Cuban intelligence officials looking for someone to retrieve American government secrets for them. Myers and his wife Gwendolyn became Cuban spies, siphoning sensitive information from government files and sending it directly to the Cuban government. Their espionage continued for numerous years as Myers climbed up the ranks of the State Department. In 1985, he became a senior analyst, and in 2000, he was promoted to a spot on the Bureau of Intelligence and Research, where he remained until his retirement seven years later. At each level of ascent, Myers used his position of authority to gain access to classified information on behalf of Cuban authorities. It was reported that he didn't steal any physical documents, instead relying on his memory and handwritten notes to pass along various pieces of information to Cuban agents, with whom he communicated via shortwave radio. The Myerses received no monetary compensation for their willingness to spy on the US government. They've been described as true believers in the Cuban system and tremendous admirers of Fidel Castro, so they carried out their elaborate deception out of sheer loyalty to the cause. On June the 4th of 2009, both Myers and his wife were arrested following a three-year joint investigation by the FBI and the Diplomatic Security Service. Myers, who was 72 at the time of his imprisonment, was given a life sentence. His wife, also in her early 70s, received 81 months. Days after the couple's arrest, Fidel Castro publicly praised their devotion to Cuba though he declined to say whether his government ever received information from them during the three decades they'd operated as spies. Number 3. Shadam Amiri A 28-year-old Iranian nuclear scientist named Shadam Amiri vanished while on an Umrah pilgrimage to Mecca in the spring of 2009. Amiri had worked as a researcher alongside Iran's Ministry of Defense and Atomic Energy Organization for many years leading up to his mysterious disappearance. In October of 2009, the Iranian foreign minister claimed that the Iranian government possessed evidence that the United States had been involved in Amiri's disappearance. There were subsequent reports that Amiri had been serving as an American spy for a number of years and that he'd been smuggled into the United States by the CIA. In July of 2010, Amiri traveled to the Embassy of Pakistan in Washington, D.C., where Iran has an interest section and asked to go back to his home country. He claimed to have been drugged by U.S. officials and taken from Iran against his will. However, American intelligence officers stated that the Iranians had threatened to harm Amiri's family if he failed to return. When he went back, Amiri was sentenced to 10 years in prison. Unfortunately, his punishment would be elevated and in August of 2016, he was executed by the Iranian government. His body was returned to his family with rope marks on his neck. Today's topic was requested by Julie Fox and Alex B. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Monica Witt Former U.S. Air Force officer Monica Witt officially became a fugitive of the Department of Justice in 2013 after being charged with espionage against the United States. Originally from El Paso, Texas, Witt enlisted in the Air Force in 1997, working as an airborne cryptologic language analyst until the early 2000s. Afterwards, she was transferred to the Air Force's Office of Special Investigations and became a counterintelligence special agent. During her military service, Witt received three Air Force Commendation Medals and three Aerial Achievement Medals. She left the Air Force in 2008 and started working as a military intelligence defense contractor. Having been put off by the violence she'd been exposed to while in the military, Witt traveled to Iran in 2012, 
she attended an international conference on Hollywoodism, which expressed deeply anti-American sentiments and supported anti-Semitic conspiracy theories. She converted to Islam and defected to Iran. Witt then began working alongside Iranian intelligence operatives, divulging classified US operations from her time as a federal agent. Witt and four Iranian nationals were indicted on espionage charges in February of 2019, at which point she was still a fugitive of the United States, with a warrant out for her arrest. US officials believe she has remained in Iran since 2013. Number 1. Anna Chapman in June of 2010, an FBI investigation into a network of Russian spies covertly working within the United States led to the arrest of 10 individuals, one of whom was 28-year-old Anna Chapman, a native of Volograd, Russia. Chapman was born Anya Kushchenko. She moved to the United Kingdom in 2001 and met her husband, Alex Chapman, at a rave party in London. By marrying a British citizen, she was able to apply for and gain citizenship of her own which she then used to obtain residency in the US. The couple divorced in 2006 and Chapman moved to New York in 2009, purportedly serving as the CEO for a real estate e-commerce platform called Property Finder Limited. Her day job, however, was just a front for the actual reason behind her immigration to the States. She had been recruited to a Russian sleeper agent initiative called The Illegals Program. She and nine other Russian spies were tasked with infiltrating American society building connections and relationships with influential business people and policymakers, and reporting back to the Russian government with the intelligence they obtained. Chapman used secure computer networks at establishments like Starbucks and Barnes & Noble to pass along encrypted information to her contacts in Russia. On June the 26th of 2010, she met with a Russian consular officer named Roman at a coffee shop in New York City. Roman asked her to give a fake US passport to a fellow Russian operative in New York the assignment raised Chapman's suspicions as she'd never before been asked to meet with other spies face to face, nor had she been asked to pass along physical documents. Chapman decided to turn the fake passport into the police. As it turned out, her Russian contact Roman was actually an undercover FBI agent, and she was subsequently arrested. Along with the other illegals program spies that were taken into custody, Chapman was sent back to her homeland on July the 9th of 2010 as part of a prisoner swap between the United States and Russia. Since returning to Russia, she has found work in a variety of different fields, including as the head of a public youth council, a television host, a magazine editor, and a runway model. Thanks for watching. Would you sell out your country for $10 million? Let us know in the comments section below.